Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Wednesday, May 25th, 2016. I'm Leanne McAdoo. And I'm Rob Dew. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the Dreamer riots get even more violent as protesters create what the police called a gauntlet of hate, burning American flags, flying Mexican flags, screaming insults in English and Spanish, and hurling rocks as they physically attack the police, Trump attendees, and even a man in a wheelchair. But they're not just angry at Trump. More than 1,300 student protesters are demanding colleges get rid of any grades below a C. Welcome to Lake Wobegon, where all the kids pretend they're above average. And a DMV scam that has cost 1.3 million drivers in Texas alone their license and $1.8 billion in fines. Most Texans don't know this is happening. Is it happening in your state? Eddie Craig breaks it down with Darren McBreen. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Well, while everyone is watching the mayhem that is rolling out this election cycle, Rand Paul is still working diligently on some other very important issues. So keep a lookout on that. He's still pushing to have the 28 redacted pages of the 9-11 investigation report released. He wants that to be released within the next 60 days of the National Defense Authorization Act uh, being signed into law later this year. So look out for that. He has long been the spearhead behind this pushing to get these pages out. Uh, but he is also introducing an amendment uh, to the upcoming defense bill saying that the current administration and other presidents to come are totally abusing the uh, authorization for military use of force because it was granted back in 2001 for Afghanistan and Iraq after 9-11. But now they're just yeah, we're just going to keep using this. it for whatever we feel exactly, like. Exactly. Yeah. Rolling out. And he says it, the Constitution explicitly gives the power to declare war to Congress and the never-ending series of wars is not being wound down by Obama, and we can only imagine what will happen if someone like Hillary Clinton gets in. So definitely keep an eye on what Rand Paul is up to. Yeah, and what's interesting is the Saudi government's now come out and, and is starting to place blame on the American government, saying, right. well, you need to look at your own government before you come after us, yeah. because we can't be, if we're going to get sued, then. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. We've talked about it. Plenty of times before. I don't know how you have three buildings fall when only two were hit by airplanes. And, yeah, and then you see yeah. the the metal rods there that were supposedly supporting the building are are cut at an angle. Cut at yeah. an angle. So obviously, if we find out the Saudi connection, we're going to find out why Bush flew the Bin Laden family out the next day on private jets. Even though, I mean, it's going to go listen to Willie Rodriguez's difficult. testimony. He heard it and felt an explosion before the plane even hit. How does right. that happen? Yeah. Well, it'll know. be very interesting. So now let's move on to another vast conspiracy. It's always evident when you see all the establishment media parroting the exact same thing. So mm -hmm. obviously they got the orders from down on high that it's finally time to call out Donald Trump for his visit to- As a conspiracy theorist. Oh my goodness, he and oh. Roger Stone have been visiting sites. And so now we've got the New York Times, um, there's Media Matters, uh, Washington Post, CNN, CNN a MSNBC, lot talking about he how he is Donald Trump is the conspiracy candidate, and now right wing media is getting its wish that this type of uh, these type of topics are finally now pushed out in the mainstream. Of course, now that he's coming out t talking about things that the media refuses to talk about, right. for instance, Bill Clinton's sex scandals. How about the 25 plus trips he took on the pedophiles jet? You know. Never mentioned that. You got to mention of it in Fox News, but nothing else, you know, and, and, and those questions won't be asked to Hillary. What do you think of this? No, we're going to sit there and focus on Trump and what he's saying, who he might have dated in the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, Trump's not being accused of infidelity. Right. You know, or they accuse him of, of making a comment to a woman in a bikini. Oh, oh, who does that? Hard, terrible. <laughs> what an awful guy. He's but they, already... they really have come out. I've actually, I'm working on a video um, with Alex that I'm going to release as soon as it's done, put it out on YouTube, where he's exposing that the media is in panic mode right now because they see the writing on the wall. They see what Trump's doing. They don't like what he's talking about. They don't like who he's talking about. So the their only defense at this point is to try to poke holes in what Trump's done. Oh, he wasn't the perfect businessman. He, you know doesn't like Rosie O'Donnell. He doesn't like Mexicans. He doesn't like uh, uh, Middle Easterners. You know, just anything they could come up with. And those talking points that, that are talked about in the mainstream media have parroted down to all their little groundlings who are right. running around trolling Because these they're Trump all owned events. by the same 
people. Exactly. And so they get their talking orders and they all put out the same. So you can read all the different article, articles and platforms and it all says the exact same thing. And then so, of course, Donald Trump points out, you know, why do we have all these cameras and reporters following me when if you really want to see a scandal, go look at the Clinton Foundation. Like, look at that there. And we'll get to that coming up later with this email server. I mean, my goodness, smoking gun, it is done with her. The fact that they've finally put this report out. Um, but, he, you know, he's absolutely right with the Clinton Foundation. If you want a real scandal, why doesn't the Washington Post have 20 plus reporters on that? Because that's what they're not interested in. They're, in, you know, Hillary Clinton is a mouthpiece and a hack for the establishment. So they want to place her, anoint her as the next president. And they are just losing their SH, if you know what I'm talking about, over Trump, because he has just defied every expectation at this point, especially mine. I didn't think he would even get this far. I figured they would steal the, um, the nomination from him. And there's still a chance to do that. They just uh, gave, I think, 40 of the 41 delegates from Washington to Ted Cruz, wow. even before the primary happened. <laughs> so he won the primary, but he doesn't get any of the delegates. So yeah. they're still working on that from the back room. So we may see some fireworks yet at the RNC this summer. Well, we're definitely going to be seeing them at the DNC. Um, everyone has been kind of having, blaming all of the violent protesters on Trump and his supporters, but we know where it's really coming from. If you and go to any Trump absolutely rally, absolutely just hang out outside man. and you can see the talking point mass brainwashing going on yeah. with the public. These people don't have original thoughts in their head. They refuse to read any of, of his policies because I have asked them, would you read any of his policies? No, I don't have time for that. Oh, but you got time to to write down all the talking points and make sure you hit them all. Come here Race and argue with me. And, yeah, no, and it, well, yeah, if you have the talking points, then you're good. Right. Just don't get into any actual real oh, debates yeah. with anyone. And if they do, if you do get into a conversation that lasts more than two questions, run the other direction. Yeah, or just yell and blow your whistle. Yeah. Kind of like the protesters were about to talk about. Now we're going to have some video Coming up in the next segment, uh, Jakari Jackson's on the ground there, Michael Zimmerman. They actually got rocks thrown at them, tear gassed once again. So these are violent protesters breaking through the barricade there at the Trump rally. And and Bernie said it could be messy. <laughs> he came oh. out and said, hey, this could be messy. Yeah, because right now the they DNC. have their little minions at the going after Trump. Right. And none of them have been going after Hillary Clinton, who is Bernie Sanders' actual competition at the moment. So they right. kind of lost their chance where... You know, maybe they could have been taken out Hillary Clinton turning some, but really they would have just turned more people to voting for her, Probably which is what's so. happening. The more people yeah. are now voting for Trump. So last night, um, Milo Yiannopoulos, he is a really controversial writer for Breitbart. He's hilarious. He's like an excellent troll level. Masterful trigger. <laughs> he's what I he's think like a master him. triggerer. And so he's on this tour uh, where he's going around to universities really talking about the First Amendment and why it needs to be protected and just triggering social justice warriors left and right. It is hilarious. So last night, he went to DePaul University, and once again, we are seeing how these schools are just backing down in the face of these violent protesters. And they're saying, oh, well, we need to protect their First Amendment right. So They're enabling the everyone gets a medal society, right. which is these, these young kids that they've grown up. There's, they've never lost anything because everybody gets a medal for everything. There's no losers. Everybody's and a winner. And we get everything done by yelling and pounding our fists. Exactly. And so the schools are just encouraging this type of action. And so last night, you can see some of the things yeah. that were done there. We'll play the video. Yeah, they blew whistles. They grabbed the microphone out of the interviewer's hand. They threatened to punch Milo in the face. Uh, they screamed, feel the burn. They basically took over the stage and, and Milo just kept his composure and stood there. And it's really interesting the way, uh, you know, these kids think this is a normal way to act. They think this is okay. They're, this is them exercising their first amendment right to just forcibly shut down an event where these Republican students on campus paid a lot of money. They had to do a lot of activism for months to try and raise the funds to get the speakers there. And so these were, the, this auditorium is filled with people who wanted to hear him speak. And so then you have this other group, they come, they rush the stage, threatening physical violence. Look at, she's in his face, that right there is threatening. And the other big issue is that uh, the school, DePaul, they went against, they violated their contract just a few days beforehand and they said, you know what, you need to get more security for this and you have to pay for it. And no, so right, Breitbart right. actually paid an extra thousand dollars to get some more additional security. And then when the security was there, they were told to stand down and to allow the protesters to do their thing. 
And because we don't want to hurt the precious yeah, snowflakes. Yeah, we don't want to hurt the snowflakes. We don't want anything to happen. Mm -hmm. And and meanwhile, they're threatening to punch him in the face and all of this stuff. And so now you can see that even the left establishment, this is coming out of Huff Post, right? The Huffington Post. They are even saying, wow, look at the monsters that we have created. We've been enabling these people. And this is uh, someone saying out of the HuffPo, like, someone please introduce me to a good constitutional law professor because I'm really confused about the First Amendment. Until yesterday, I never realized that forcibly shutting down a private speaking event was considered free speech. I was also surprised to learn that assaulting a police officer is now a form of protest. And it certainly never occurred to me that making violent threats toward a speaker was a constitutionally protected right. So, in fact, I was pretty confident all of these things were highly illegal, but yet that's exactly what radical protesters did yesterday. And the crowd, you know, had enough. And after an extended period of time, they started chanting at the security, do your job, do your job. Hey, stop. You know, we're having an event, a private event for our, our club or whatever they had uh, over there. They, you know, they invited Milo to come speak. Right. You know, our... our I never, I used to go watch these people speak in college, different, different people would come in. And I never saw people act this way. You might have people protesting out front mm -hmm. or right in front of the door or handing out leaflets or something or trying to engage people, but never to this degree. And yeah. it, it's the it's enabling- where They're actually threatening violence. We have a uh, yeah. Joseph Watson article up where now there's even more kill Trump threats and that's uh, okay. Flooding Twitter yeah. before the Anaheim, the, the Anaheim event that's set to take place where we've got guys on the ground there as well. And they're expecting riots. I mean, we saw what is, happened last night in Albuquerque, just insane mayhem, madness. Mm -hmm. And these are people, they're just exercising their First Amendment right. And that's something that people always argue on the other side. They say, well, it doesn't, it doesn't protect violent or hateful speech. And yet that's exactly what's happening here. And they're being protected. They're threatening to punch someone in the face and making violent threats. And yet they're protected. So it only protects. It only protects the speech that they feel is, is okay. If it's not okay speech, then we can't have it. It's hurtful. It scares me. And they base it all. It goes back to their feelings. It has no basis in logic. And if you watch, there's, there's a video. I think it's called Degenerate Protesters Curse at um, People Going Into the Trump Rally. This is yesterday. And as these people are walking through, they have to walk through a gauntlet of people screaming and cursing at them. When the females walk by, they're like, you're a woman, how could you? Uh, uh. I mean, these people are just such scum. Where do they come from? Right. And why do they think it's their place to go out and and, and try to change or, or scream at people? It's, right. it's the screaming Where at people Where are they getting constantly. this little violent fascist red guard training? And that's what's so frightening. Yeah. And if I was a parent, I would rip my kids out of these universities because they're not being well prepared to get a job when they get out of school. And all of these future employers are going to be have to be dealing with this type of babyish behavior. Uh, for instance, check this out. Students are wanting to abolish midterms and any grades below a C That's right. because they said that they've been too busy <laughs> with their protesting. political activism. They've been out too busy protesting that they haven't been able to Aww. study well, and so now they're making these demands saying, we demand you abolish the midterm and allow us to have a conversation with our teacher instead. I mean, what the hell? Like, this is what happens now. This is, this is people can just come and make these demands and just completely restructure society and how it works. And these schools are encouraging it. The deans are like, you're right. I quit. I stepped down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're totally kowtowing to these people. And it, it really is the mentality of everybody wins all the time. We can't right. have any losers. And uh, it's, a, it's a socialist mentality, really. This right. is what this is. And they've, they've started this in, uh, in grade school, in, in elementary school, and it just builds on up. And the kids expect it because this is how they've been treated their entire right. lives. And they, when you treat people never like been this, spanked. Everyone's they a winner. It. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And, well, it, and the thing, totally too, is disgusting. like imagine now they're fighting. They're doing this fight for 15 and so they're even now threatening to have these type of really uh, exacerbated protests for this as well. But one robot costs $35,000, right? Yeah, that's kind of expensive. But to pay one person $15 an hour, 40 hours a week, would cover the cost of that robot who could replace every employee at McDonald's. They're doing it so at Wendy's So they're just right going to, they're like driving everything yeah. down into society. So it's all right. This you is what they want. Screwed. This is what this they is a want. Lost generation. This is what they want right here. They want. They don't really work for a living. They want to scream and rant and think that's going to get their way. 
And it, they, I can't wait till they get out in the real world. These oh, people man. try to go get a job with their, their women's studies degrees or, or their fairness and, <laughs> and everything act or whatever, whatever these people are, are into. Well, and that's the thing is a lot of people are saying is that when you have people at the top who are so corrupt and you, your, your leaders are so corrupt and they're not checked, you're going to start to see that trickle down into society. And that is exactly what we're seeing. We have the Democratic frontrunner for president, Hillary Clinton, who violated the security rules. This whole email, so people want to just, would the email, it's not. Well, now we've got the smoking gun. They've released this report. And according to this audit, Clinton, Clinton ignored the guidelines. She didn't seek approval for any from any of the senior information officers when she established and set up this private email server. and. She was hacked several times, 2011 mm -hmm. hack attempts, showing that she was afraid to open her email. Uh, the, the IT people said, okay, shut down the server for a few minutes, but don't anyone send her any Goose sensitive information. Goose refers to read her emails for fun. For funsies. Yeah. And here is the thing that I think is just the total smoking gun. She is guilty. She knew what she was doing. There was a November 2010 email exchange between her and Huma, which, by the way, her and Huma are the only two who have refused to cooperate with the um, with the State Department's investigation with the Inspector General. So hello. But in November 2010, Huma sent her an email saying, hey, you know, we should talk about putting you on the state email or releasing your email address so that you're not going to spam because she was going to some of her subordinates mm. spam email. And she said, let's get separate address or device but I don't want any risk of the personal being accessible. So Ooh. she didn't want her personal stuff accessed by the State Department. Boom, guilty, done deal. Well, that's what happens when you're corrupt. Absolutely. Well, stick around because we've got some excitement in Albuquerque. The Texas Department of Public Safety has suspended over 1.3 million driver's licenses over an unconstitutional revenue generating scheme that has put millions of Texans in double jeopardy. Essentially double taxing individuals for traffic violations. So let's say you get a speeding ticket or God forbid you're caught driving without car insurance. Not only do you have to pay a fine for the original citation, but now they are also forcing you to pay an added surcharge on top of that. And I tell you what, it's expensive too. And it, it, this is totally outside of the court system. The annual surcharges are even more costly than the original ticket fees. And they cost anywhere on average about you know $2,000. And if you don't pay the ransom fee, or if you are late on one single payment, guess what? Your driver's license is suspended. So far, like I said, over a million people in Texas have lost their driving privileges because of this draconian program. But hey, it generates lots of money to the state, and that's what makes it so difficult to get rid of. And joining us now is former Texas deputy sheriff and host of Rule of Law Radio, Eddie Craig. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, I tell you what, uh, George Orwell would be proud of the title of this program. It's called the Texas Driver Responsibility Program. It was created from what I understand to generate money for medical centers and roads while encouraging safer driving. So far, the state of T Texas has tried to collect $1.8 billion worth of surcharges but more than 60% of the amount billed has gone uncollected. What do you know about the program and what are people doing to repeal the program? Um, as far as repealing it, that I don't know, but I'm trying to educate people on what this program applies to and what it doesn't. The most, the most important thing to understand about it is that it is completely unconstitutional in how it's being applied to the people of Texas, first off. Uh, what this is, this surcharge is not determined by a jury for being convicted of some sort of crime or any other offense. This is attached after the fact without the jury ever reviewing the money award that is being given to the state through these fees. When you go to trial and face a jury over a uh, traffic citation, for instance, if you are under one of the programs that these fees apply to, like the uh, Financial Responsibility Act, 
when they collect these fees after a conviction, that fee comes out of monies other than what the jury ruled against you for and what the fine limit in the actual statute is. Now, the important thing also to understand about that is that not only do these relate only to those people that are engaging in transportation, but these assessments of fees without a judicial determination of guilt in relation to those fees being determined by a jury or by a judge would be a bill of pains and penalties under any constitution in the land. And those are specifically prohibited here. Well, I'm just, else. I'm just shocked that this thing got, you know, passed to begin with. And, and it's been a program since it was effective in 2003. But there's there are people that I've talked to and that I've read about who are still paying fines 10 years later. There was a woman, she was a 28 year old mother who was driving her sister car. Her sister had just passed away. She was driving her sister's car. She got pulled over. The car was not insured. So she paid the ticket. Right. She paid the ticket right away. But then months later, she found out that there was these surcharges that she was unaware of. Her license was suspended and uh, she was a, a pizza delivery person. She lost her job. And she is since this time has dumped thousands of dollars of trying to get her license back and just added charges from her original ticket 10 years ago. I mean, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. This is one of the things about the Texas legislature giving over to a third party uh, collection agency these fees. The Department of Public Safety is the specific state agency in Texas that is given authority over these fees. The way the statute is written in the system is set up works more or less like this. Once a citation has been issued to an individual, if that citation involves a charge to which one of these types of administrative fees applies, 30 days after that ticket is written and filed with the court, that court will then send the notice to the Department of Public Safety to levy those fees, even if the person has never even been to trial in the matter or even been convicted. You will spend a lot of time and effort trying to get the DPS to withdraw those fees, even if you win the case or the charges are dismissed. They've already levied them against you and you've never been convicted of anything. This is just another underhanded way of doing civil asset forfeiture, except it's limited strictly to your money. They don't care who they're harming with this program. They don't care that it's being illegally applied to the general public when it is specifically limited by law to only those people engaged in the commercial occupation we call transportation. It was never meant to be applied to the general public. But even applied to those that agreed to it through accepting a license to engage in a business, it is still a denial of due process. It is still a bill of pains and penalties that is outlawed by the state constitution, the federal constitution, and every other constitution. Well, I think Everything about this program is illegal. Absolutely. And I, and I think this quote says it all. This was at the the Texas House Committee on Homeland Security and Public Safety, where Representative Joe Pickett, he's a Democrat from El Paso, here's his quote, here's the reality. We are the government and we're not going to give up the money. So basically what they're saying is this is generating billions of dollars for the state of Texas, even though it's illegal, they're just, they're not willing to give it up. Absolutely, and that representative right there should have been charged with treason and immediately arrested. He confessed to that in open session in front of two or more witnesses. That's treason. You know, this, this they, reminds they me. They charge him with that. This, this whole thing reminds me of not only redcoats, but I, I can I picture a mob boss going into a neighborhood, uh, a neighborhood stores and asking for protection money. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, how is this any different from a mobster stealing money from innocent civilians? It, it's not, but it's not even under the guise of protection. It's you're going to pay us or we're going to burn your house down and, and destroy your family and your ability to earn a living. We don't care if we offer you anything in return. You're just going to pay us. And that's essentially what it comes down to. We now are, our government is now controlled by a bunch of thugs, thieves, and crooks of every level and magnitude you can imagine. They're no longer representatives because by the very definition of a representative, they have the power to represent you which means the limit of their authority is the same limit that your authority would be. 
if I can't go to my neighbor and demand that they pay me a fee just because I want one, then neither can my representative. And calling yourself government does not make the crime any less a crime. That's well, the part they don't seem to understand. And I tell you what, this hits close to home for me because I'm experiencing this firsthand myself because I got pulled over in a truck that I was driving that was not insured. I was hit with the surcharge. I have to pay $2,000 in installment payments for three years. And guess what? If, if I miss a payment or if I'm late on a payment, it says my license will be suspended. So I'm seeing it firsthand for myself. Yeah, those those fees never applied to you to begin with, nor did the license requirement, which we've discussed before on the show. Uh, in fact, I've got a new set of motions I'm doing now that exposes this when you're taken into court and forces the court to have to admit on the record or show that they're not going to play by the rules regardless of what they say, kind of like what this representative admitted he's going to do as a representative. That shows unequivocally that this entire thing is a racket. It, it's been a racket from day one because no one knows how to defend themselves in these courts that don't play by the rules to begin with. Well, that's then right. they and turn you, that, around that, and throw key. you in jail when you don't pay. And that's key right there. Nobody knows how to defend themselves. Eddie Craig, Rule of Law Radio, last question. We're almost out of time. What do we do to fight this? We need to be suing everybody involved, the Department of Public Safety, the agencies, the legislative members, they can declare immunity all they want. They don't have immunity for violating the Texas Constitution or the federal Constitution. That's they right. should know that by now. That's right. All right. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Look forward to having you back again soon. Thank you. Jakari Jackson reporting from Albuquerque, New Mexico, outside of the Trump rally. Trump is set to speak in about an hour from now. Uh, but as you can see right now, there's a large group of anti-Trump demonstrators. Let's go ahead and take a walk down here and see if maybe we can uh, get a word with a few of the folks who came out here. Uh, now, this is the anti-Trump side. There is a pro-Trump side, which is back that way. We'll try to get over there in just a little bit. Let's get a little bit closer here and see if we can take a look at some of the signs. So this guy has a very sensational sign. Sir, do you mind if I ask you what brought you out here today? Um, the First Amendment right to protest. All right, we'll take a look at your shirt and uh, at your sign here. So you got the F Trump shirt and also Trump for KKK or KKK for Trump. Uh, what is what is your beef with Donald Trump? Well, <laughs> number one, I think he's a manifestation of the media. I mean, we have a reality star that's, be, that's uh, running for president. I mean, who's next, Kim Kardashian or Justin Bieber? That's pathetic. I mean, it really is. And I mean, he, he says anything just to pander to any crowd. So he's, he's at Liberty University and he quotes Corinthians 2 or whatever, you know? So, I mean. As far as policy, what's his policies that you can't get with? Um, well, I know that he'd revert back to the essence of tax cuts. Okay, for the wealthiest, um, cutting trade embargoes, um, you know, ma shipping out jobs. I mean, he says he's for American jobs, but all of his clothes that's made is made in China. So he's a hypocrite when it comes to that standpoint, you know, so. All right. Anything else? Oh, no, I, there's plenty of other things. His xenophobia, his racism, overt racism, and not being able to walk away from D uh, Donald, uh, I mean, from uh, David Duke or any other white supremacist that endorse him, you know. You know, so I mean, and the violence that's taking place at his at his rallies, you know. So, sir, I'm, I will challenge you on that point. We've seen people like Hillary be endorsed by Klan uh, members as well. I, mean, I, I agree with that. Th those are just trolls. I mean, really. I mean, okay, so look at okay, so if you look at the the, the history of because I teach history, okay, so conservatives oppose the Declaration of Independence because they don't want to give up their power, okay. <laughs> Donald Trump. Uh, so, but you look at the civil rights area, who was opposed to it? Conservatives. Who opposed to free and slavery? Conservatives. Who was opposed to allowing women to vote? 
conservatives, okay? So paying for, uh, you know, public education, they try to dismantle public education. I'm a public school and public education teacher, and they're constantly trying to dismantle it. They've tried the idea of vouchers, now they have charter schools, all it does is hurt education. I mean, it's, they go, and I teach this in my world history class, it's, it's the movie Bugs Life, it's the ants versus the grasshoppers. The problem is, is you get people to think that they're grasshoppers, but they're really ants. Okay. And I, I, I like some of the things that you guys do on InfoWars, but I think some of it can be a little bit lunacy, you know, so I, I listen to some of the things that you do and I, and I have believe, I'm, I believe a lot of the things, but when it comes, when in, at the end of the day, Hillary's going to appoint a Supreme Court justice, possibly up to four, that's better for America, better for workers, better for my son, better for the air that they, that they breathe, the water that they drink. Okay, so that in, in the end, okay, yes, President Obama's gone, but he appointed two Supreme Court justices. He's going to recess appoint a third to protect Hillary. He really is. So, I mean, so. <laughs> Hit me with a freaking rock. <coughs> there you ran. Now I got the tear gas in my lungs. Outside the Trump event, it just wrapped up. Murray wrapped up a while ago, but probably about 20 minutes ago, they shot the tear gas off. And we talking to this gentleman, and he wants to tell us his thoughts on it. The only reason that they started shooting tear gas at us is because an old man was pushed by a police officer. I asked, let him pass. Let him walk away. He had a cane. No, he hits him in the face for no apparent reason. When Donald Trump showed up, look how heavy and hate he brought here. I stand for people, our armed services, our men and women in uniform. We're supposed to stand united, but he brings division. He brings hatred. We're supposed to stand united, aren't we? Aren't we all Americans? Our, our, our liberty is supposed to be uphold. Our constitution is supposed to be held in the strongest upset. My bad. Um, I'm challenging you here for one second. I'm not a Donald Trump supporter at all, but I'm, I'm saying this to you. Donald Trump didn't set any trash can fires. Donald Trump didn't throw any rocks. All the other stuff you've seen out here, he did not do that. The reason that, yeah, the start, fires started earlier. Yeah. But when that man was attacked by a police officer, oh. that incited violence. Obviously, they brought it when they attacked that innocent man. Now, what the f is that supposed to be about, my best? Excuse my language. You got, sir. But you know, look it. We're supposed to protect foreign and domestic. 
but they're domestic here. They're bringing domestic terrorism to us. We're all Americans. We have the free to stand where we please. We're not sheep. We're not slaves. Oh, my bad. I'll say what you got to say. And, you know, we're supposed to stand. Look at what they're trying to do. They're trying to force us on our knees. American was founded on revolution. We're founded on immigrants. George Washington, we should take example. Abraham Lincoln, Patton, they fought for this country, didn't they? Didn't they do any good? We must stand. We must stand united. And I'm not sure how, if at all, the anti-Trump demonstrators helped their cause tonight. I'm by no means a Donald Trump supporter, but if I was to watch a video of people yelling and cussing at old women and little kids, uh, that's not somebody I would want to team up with. Just, just vile rhetoric. And people talk about Donald Trump's racism. Yeah, he said a bunch of controversial stuff, but I've seen people just say the most hateful things, um, whether it's uh, Hispanic to Hispanic, or white to white, uh, whatever else. Just attacking people on their physical appearance, just, you know, all manner of childishness, you know, like being in a 13-year-old or a 13-year-old uh, lunchroom with a bunch of kids, you know. That's pretty much how it was. And I have to say, I did not see any Donald Trump supporters acting vile and vicious. Everybody I talked to was very polite. Even if I didn't agree with all their policies, uh, they could explain why they felt that way in a very eloquent manner. And I found some uh, anti-Trump people that could do so as well, but the number of Trump people that could speak their mind eloquently was much higher than the people I spoke to who opposed Donald Trump. They just yelled and cursed and, you know, F this and, you know, you do that with your mother, all that kind of stuff. It's gone a little crazy, but this is what happens when Donald Trump comes to a Latin nation. But also, we're in New Mexico, so let's get this straight. We're not in Mexico. We're New Mexico. We're above Mexico. The TSA, a monstrosity of bloated George Bush-era New World Order policy resulting from the nefarious relationship between the Bush family and the Saudis. This relationship has forced Rand Paul to file an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act mandating that the 28 classified pages of the 9-11 report be released within 60 days of the NDAA being signed into law later this year. Meanwhile, the TSA cost the taxpayers in the ballpark of seven billion dollars annually. Money spent on a long, embarrassing track record resulting in Homeland Security being successful in smuggling guns and bombs through TSA security 67 out of 70 times. Loaded guns still pass right through the TSA, as happened in Atlanta recently, not to mention the fact that you have a pretty good chance of being robbed by a TSA agent. RT reported that a TSA agent convicted of stealing more than $800,000 worth of goods from travelers said this type of theft is commonplace among airport security. Almost 400 TSA officers have been fired for stealing from passengers since 2003. But there we are, standing in long lines, each one of us having our Fourth Amendment rights violated and our tax dollars squandered, while the borders remain wide open as drug traffickers, child rapists, and terrorists surge through the unprotected property of American citizens while the Border Patrol is ordered to stand down. Meanwhile, as many as 4,000 flyers missed their flights on American Airlines from February of this year alone. Got it? Illegal aliens move freer than American citizens, and we are paying for it. The borders are open, and we have mainstream news articles admitting that they fly in planes to New York every day out of Mexico and other countries, and no one is even checked. No IDs are even looked at. Congress approves TSA requests for screeners to meet summer crush. They're going to get an additional $34 million to hire an additional 768 new officers and pay overtime for 42000 plus. So what does the establishment do? The House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform fired Kelly Hogan, the TSA's chief of security, mainly because Hogan, who was paid $181,000 a year, received $90,000 in bonuses, regardless of the fact that TSA had been recently revealed to be a complete 
failure, as if that fixes the problem. And the only recourse for the airlines as Memorial Day weekend looms is for the airlines to take over the gridlock. Bloomberg reports, American, Delta, and United Airlines will spend as much as $4 million each for extra workers at their busiest airports to help manage lines and shuffle bins at checkpoints, freeing up TSA officers to focus on screening. Carriers and airports also are diverting some of their own employees to take the load off TSA staff. You want a solution? Shut down the TSA and reinvigorate the spirit of the American people by restoring the Fourth Amendment. Terrorists want to take a plane over? Well, our Second Amendment rights have a pretty simple fix for that. Of course, I admit, a shootout at 35,000 feet isn't the smartest solution. So if the bureaucracy must continue, take that $7 billion spent on the TSA annually and expand and modify the highly trained Sky Marshal Service into an agency that actually obeys the Bill of Rights. Because right now, the only thing the TSA provides is a guaranteed false sense of security to protect the travelers who are being set up for disaster by an alphabet agency expanding its grip on the very freedom and security the TSA supposedly protects. John Bound for Infowars.com. Everybody, please hold up your OC Weekly sign. Please. What do you guys want to do to this piñata? All right, guys, I'm going to let you guys do what you guys want to do to this piñata. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are your parents legal? I'm asking a question. Obviously, they're not. Maybe you were born here. Don't listen to his bullshit. Maybe he said you were born here. To me. His but bullshit. Parents legal. You are racist. Yes, it you does. You are a racist. Because you shouldn't be in this country. Racism at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. They can go back to whatever country they were born. Everyone in this country was not from here. We're all immigrants. Exactly. We are all immigrants. Look, we have blood on our hands. That's what God gave us. That's what makes us all you. That's what gave us right. Why wait? No, fuck you. It's very hard on your borders. Why don't you go? Why don't you go down south? This is going to prevail. But you lost the land. Thank God you lost the land. You think we want America to be like Mexico? No. If you want it, go to Mexico. Don't let the door hit you in the way. They're prouder than us. He is prouder than us. You go to Mexico. He's accused me of dying of AIDS. He has called me a girl. He is homophobic. He is racist. Why would we halt Islam? Islamic people do nothing wrong. And a bunch of good people who are terrorizing has nothing to do with religion. Country. I love my country. I love it. We're going through hard times. I love this country. I love this country as much as Thank you. We all love America. Thank you. We all love America. We all love America. Yeah, we don't like the way it's going. Right now. Hey, we're just trying to walk. You guys are blocking our way. Just because you don't like Trump doesn't mean you don't have to love our country. I said I'm not for Trump. I said I like it. That's fair enough. We can come to an agreement, right? We can come to an agreement. We lead the way for the nation right here. Everyone has different views.
Yeah. We all have different views. One is we're all getting screwed. Hey, I got hit with Bernie knows, and I'm not saying any of these politicians know. I'm just saying Trump doesn't know. know. Where's the law? 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 USA! 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 You all love the bigotry! You all love the bigotry! USA! I love my country! Why don't you put that hate bigotry? You're a f***ing bigot, bitch! What does bigotry even mean? What does it even mean? Well, that's it for the show tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. and join us on the Alex Jones Show at 11 a.m. tomorrow.